Hi, I'm Dr. Felicia Timmerman. Today, using a regular iPhone camera fit with a series of different lenses, we're gonna simulate what a child with myopia sees. If you're not completely familiar with myopia, otherwise known as nearsightedness, it's a condition that occurs when the eye grows longer than it should. So light that enters the eye focuses in front of the tissue that lines the back of the eye, called the retina. This causes distance objects to appear blurry, such as the whiteboard in school. Because myopia is a progressive eye disease that can only be slowed and not reversed, there's a real benefit to early detection and treatment. The amount of vision correction a patient requires is expressed in units called diopters. If a patient is myopic, their eye prescription will be stated in negative diopters. For this simulation, we're going to look at three different levels of myopia, minus one, which is the mildest, minus 2.5, and minus five diopters. By comparing these different levels of nearsightedness, you'll get a better sense of what your child may be experiencing. So let's get started in the classroom. This is one of the situations that often leads to a diagnosis of myopia. If a child requires no vision correction, here's what they would see. Notice how the writing on the whiteboard is legible and the posters at the back of the classroom appear in focus. Now, we've adjusted our lens to simulate a child's vision at minus one diopter. Not too bad overall. The child would likely have to squint, but the whiteboard is still somewhat legible. When we make the change to minus two and a half diopters, the effects of myopia become much more noticeable. Now the whiteboard is out of focus. The child would certainly need to move closer in order to read the lessons and the material that are written on the board. If we change to a minus five diopters, the effects of myopia are much more profound. Look at the whiteboard. All objects in the distance are now a complete blur. To recap, here's a side-by-side -side look at the classroom comparing the various levels of myopia. Now let's take a look at a child who has an active lifestyle that's outdoors. Here we are shooting free throws at a youth basketball practice. With no refractive air, that rim is a nice clear target. A child with a minus one is going to see the rim a little bit blurry but can still take aim with quite a bit of confidence. At minus two and a half, the basket becomes much more fuzzy. At minus five, the entire basket and backboard blurs into one. Imagine seeing this as a player with the game on the line. Again, here's a quick side-by-side -side look at the various levels of myopia. Now that you learned how myopia progression can impact the quality of life in children, be sure to do something about it. Always be on the lookout for early signs of myopia and be sure to schedule an appointment with the doctor right away if you suspect an issue. I always recommend scheduling regular annual appointments with your eye care professional. And lastly, stay current on the developments of myopia management, such as the MySight One Day Contact Lens, the only FDA approved contact lens to slow the progression of myopia in children eight to 12 years old at the initiation of treatment.